waiting to order, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item number three, public comment. Is there any public comment? Yes, please. Uh, my name is Lillian McKenzie, um, and I live at 106 Balance Rock Road um, in Timor. Hello, select persons and Madam First Select Woman. Uh, we're on the agenda tonight, so I'll keep this brief. Um, I'm rep representing All In for Seymour. Um, we're an alliance of community leaders and neighborhood organizations that work together through organizing, education, and policy work to make it possible for everyone here in Seymour to have what they need to live well together. And this includes three main pillars. Number one, making sure every individual in Seymour has a safe and dependable place to live. Number two, a place where access to food is secure. And number three, a voice in the discussions and decisions that affect our lives. Um, all in groups are growing in many towns in our region, but our work here in Seymour is very much local. Our alliance includes representation from the Trinity Episcopal Church, Seymour Congregational Church, uh, the Little Free Pantry on Skokorat, the Blessing Pantry, Team Inc., um, where I'm a staff member, Haven's Harvest, and more. Um, we appreciate what you've done and continue to strive to do for this town and our residents, and we look forward to working with you to achieve goals that will benefit all of our fellow citizens, and we look forward to having a dialogue later in tonight's meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Now the public comment, we will move on to item number four, <coughs> approval of the minutes from the March 15th Board of Selectmen regular meeting. So I move. Motion by Trish. Uh, seconded. Second by Chris Bell in discussion. Uh, I saw something, I, I'm just gonna try to find it. No problem. Um, it's like a s spelling error or something, it's not that important. I don't want to hold this up for that, so. Okay. No, I saw, uh, there were, um, there was like a misspelling or something I just wanted to correct, but I okay. didn't write it down, so I forgot it, so it's not that important. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nays? Abstain. Abstains. Please mark it, count uh, Mr. Sluckman Finley's abstention, and <coughs> or in favors. Thank you. Um, discussion and take possible action regarding the 2022 road construction program. Um, present it. We're here to present as the roads were presented to us by um, Brian Nesteriak, and now we need to accept them. And the roads that were presented to us were. Oh, I them down. Sorry, your mic now. You got it? I don't know. Right here. This? Yeah, right here. Uh, Mountain Road, Mill and Pave, various l large lengths. Washington Avenue, Mill <coughs> and Repave, drainage improvement, sidewalk and replacement. Old Ansonia Road, Mill and Pave, various large lengths. Pearl Street, Mill and Pave, various large lengths. Also on the list are Seymour Avenue, which is on hold until the grants are approved. Okay. And it says Botsford Road, but that's actually West Church Street, where the historical center is, going up West Church Street, all the way up Bungie Road, up to Botsford Road, up to, I think that's a Jell-O's Farm Road. Um, we say it's on hold because that money's coming in from the lots of funding, so that's the next in the bucket because we just got the funding for Holbrook. So now Bungie is in review. So that should be coming out next year. So we'll be doing that road. So we are, um, we just need an approval for those roads for Brian to go part of it. I, I, need a motion. I do have discussion. Well, we, do, we could, but we have to have the motion approved. I'll make a motion. Motion by Trish Denka. Second. Second by Chris Bowen. Discussion. Bob Finley. Um, this is great. The only thing I wanted to, we had a WPCA meeting last night, and there was some work that we need to do on in some of those in some of the areas I don't know if they correlate to these roads okay the only thing we asked was if we were going to do any road work and we do know we have to do some uh, 
hundred underneath work that we take that in consideration so that we don't pave and then have to cut it up and repave again. Right. So we'll have uh, Brian. Brian reach out to your board. Uh, I to would the WPCA reach out board. To, uh, or to reach out to Navis and Young. Yeah. Just uh, Jim Galligan. Sure and have them work together so they can we're not ripping up a road that we just that's paid. the only thing i mean i don't i don't remember any of these roads being on but i it was a big list and i don't nope, want to i just Thanks want to make sure it's reviewed so i have a comment as well okay <clears throat> where they're milling and repaving pearl street i know there was discussion that there's going to be construction and trucks using um pearl street and we might is that not going to affect the area on pearl street that they're going to be milling and repaving or do we want to hold off? Are, are you speaking of the um, project office spring? Yes. Remember last meeting, yep. they were talking about possibly holding off Pearl Street because they were going to I don't to think be. they're going in that area until after the, the construction has started. So, so they're not going to so, pave okay. it until after that's done. Okay. And if we yeah. have to wait until next year to do it because the building is still going on. Okay. I just don't want to do it yeah. twice. No, neither do we. Thank you. So. What percentage of the monies that are being expended on the, these roads is out of the either current budget or the next budget? It's all out of low set money. It's all low set money. It's all low set okay. money. Okay. Thank you. Second ball? Nothing we haven't talked about. Okay, well, I know you're very passionate about Seymour Avenue, and I just want you to know that we're not forgetting it. No, I, I realize that. No, I have no real comment on any of this. Okay. I think these are these are high priorities. I think we've all prioritized this. Okay. Great. Can I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve, just to make sure that we move to get out with the two engineers. That's all. Okay. Motion by Bob, Bob. Finley. Make the motion. Um, didn't we do the motion? Wait, we have a motion. Yeah, we have accept, a motion it, accept, accept it. Accept it. Right, accept it. Accept. All in favor? You're aye. right. Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. Sorry. But we also want to make sure the motion includes we will check with the engineer prior to any roads being Turn done, right. as well as uh, Jim Baldwin for construction on Pearl Street. I want to make sure oh, we get it. Huh? Navis and, Young, Navis and Young for the WPCA. Right. Jim Baldwin for, for the town. The town. Okay. Next on our agenda is number six, discussion with all and for Seymour. Mm -hmm. Kind of rhymes like my, what's happening in the 888, all in for Seymour. Which does keep us in the know. It does. Okay. Awesome. I try the, what's happening in the 463. I don't like it. Yes, I'm keeping the 888. Hi, thank you. Uh, she gave us a wonderful introduction. Um, as far name, as name and record, address for the, for the record, record, please. Former <laughs> Selectman Robert Day and 22 Woodside Avenue, father of resident Alexander Day and King's Baby in C. One of the King's Baby. One of the King's Baby. It should be a competition. We're going to have a little. Uh, Who's not here tonight? Water, we'd like to do a baby fight club down the hall. <laughs> Maybe we'll just skip, take that out of the. Uh, take that out of the. Out of the. Out of the. Out of the. Right, I, our 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 I hope so. Because yeah. we're only joking. I've learned that it's selective. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They do because they're wonderful people, and in the spirit of them being wonderful people, uh, we have been coordinating through Team In, this organization which. All In has kind of become the name that has been adopted, that has started to spread through all the organizations through the regions. Yeah, it's, it's, it happened organically because it is just a collaboration of citizens who are all in to make sure their town is looking out for all of its citizens. And bear in mind, and I know all of you, I, you know, I don't know the connections that you have with them. I know all of you, so I'm really adamant that I know you are a group of people who care about doing what is best. Citizens. Mm -hmm. And in that spirit, you now have a group that is really doing everything it can to reach out to the citizenry, to inform them of what's happening, how they can help out, how they can be part of the discussion, how you can know what they need so that they can get what they need. Because if they don't tell you, they don't know. Um, so she did mention the pillars that we have. Uh, some of the different groups have taken on 
again, specific to their community. Uh, ARPA funds in Oxford, that's our main, our main focus. One of the main focuses here in Seymour has been food insecurity. Uh, we mentioned uh, the food pantries that they have. The, uh, one of our members uh, who couldn't be here tonight, she may come in later. Uh, yeah, Jen Rice. I always want to say Jen Willis, because uh, I know what uh, Jen Rice uh, runs the, uh, <coughs> the uh, little free pantry that is right across from uh, Chatfield School. Uh, Scroll for if anyone's familiar with that one. Um, wonderful effort. Uh, and this, we hope, is going to be the beginning of lots of interactions and discussions with you guys to see how we can help, how we can communicate with anyone. Uh, one of the issues that is coming up right now is the ARPA funds, how those are going to be handled, what the plan is for that. Uh, that's been a discussion going on in a lot of the different communities. So that being said, where do we want to go with this discussion? Anywhere specific or absolutely? Yeah, sure. Could I hand out? Um, absolutely. Um, yeah. Uh, do you have an online? Do you have an online presence? Currently, no. Yeah. We, okay. We're using Teams platform uh, for now, but we'll start. So Facebook right. page? Yes. Yep. Uh, if, uh, I, because there is, Thank you know, collaboration, communication. We have crossed down meetings. Uh, one of the towns that really got their uh, social mm -hmm. media game going fast was all in for milk. Mm -hmm. So if you were to check their uh, website, uh, you can see how the, the kind of shape something like this. I will note, Googling all in, not that effective, I've noticed. Not that effective. <laughs> but try, try all in for Milford. All in for Milford. Or, and you said you're, you're on Facebook? Uh, yeah, um, for Team A. Okay. So, our, it's, so it's all in for Seymour. It's correct. The word that. is speaking to you today. Okay, thank you. Um, I, like I mentioned, I'm a staff member at Team. Just wanted to, you know, bring up the topic of, of housing um, at Team, like we spoke about a few weeks ago. Uh, we had seen a 49% increase in referrals um, calling in uh, for folks specifically looking for housing assistance, um, rental assistance, just trying to avoid eviction, um, folks looking for help with their security deposits. Those are all things uh, that we do, um, working with landlords, uh, and things like that. Um, and so since the end of UNAC CT, we've seen a, a huge, uh, huge increase in, um, in folks calling in just to, to seek help with uh, keeping the roof over their head. Um, Personally, I'm a, a very new resident here in Seymour. I just moved in January. Welcome um, to Seymour. Thank you. Thank you for choosing us. I, I love it. I'm not a, I came from Central Connecticut, the Hartford area. Um, and I came down because I uh, work now in Derby and wanted to be closer to work. Um, and I'm not someone who likes a super big city or big bustling city like New Haven. I wanted something that felt closer to the suburban town I grew up in. Um, and wanted to be in here and see more. I love the trails and everything. Um, and I feel very lucky to be able to afford rent here. And I know that's not the case for many young people <coughs> like myself. Um, I feel like I'm in a really good position um, to be able to afford a one bedroom apartment right now. Um, but even just starting to think about putting away money for a house, that's really tight right now. Um, so there's a lot of people in my position where I feel like I'm I'm lucky, I'm in a really good position with good education, good job. Um, so just thinking about folks who are lower income and didn't have the same opportunities that I have, um, how difficult it is for them to afford um, just a simple one bedroom or studio apartment um, in Seymour or anywhere in the Valley. So uh, I'm very glad to be here. Um, I feel lucky, but I want to pass it to my friends who work closer in the food insecurity
That's not fair. I want to just, as the pastor of the church, I represent many, many people from Seymour and part of this wonderful group. But I just wanted to let you know that as we started, um, and for many of us, uh, this kind of uh, activity is new and different, but the way in which we went about uh, building our connections is kind of interesting. So I just, um, we've been taught to do what we're termed favorite one-to-one, -one. Um, but just connecting with each other. Uh, Jenny Rice, who does the little uh, free pantry um, on Skokra, um, she's made connections with the Soto Farms, and um, they're busy talking about community gardens, and, and so then we're moving in that direction, and then uh, we've just been meeting with people and just learning and connecting with each other, and that's, we'd like to pass those connections on to to you as a board, but also be of use to you. So it's been an incredibly different and exciting adventure so far. So we hope to, to include you in it. Thank you.
president has a, a place where they can share their voice in all of the decisions that affect their lives. Um, and you guys are creating the platform for that. We see the ARPA um, funding forums as a huge opportunity to get Seymour residents involved. Um, so you set up three of those, and that's great. And this is like the massive opportunity that we're waiting for to help get um, Seymour residents involved and, and people in those seats at each of these forums. Um, just to talk, uh, hear from you guys, learn about what your plans are, and um, share their, their ideas and what they're seeing in town every day and where they might see some needs. Um, so really looking forward to that, and thank you for the opportunity to get the community uh, involved in that. Um, and that's the kind of thing that we hope to continue on. Obviously, this ARPA funding is uh, very rare. It's not going to come around um, often at all. Um, but we hope as, as larger decisions that are affecting Seymour and everyone here, we can continue to get regular participation from the community. And that's what we're looking for. Um, but do you guys have any questions for us? Yeah, I, I do. Um, so how are you structured from a board perspective? Do you have a leader? How does the leadership work and how does it work with other towns? Yeah, we just started back in 2020. Um, and so it's very new. Um, team has a consultant on staff. It's really just grassroots community organizing. Um, so right now our, our consultant is, has created this foundation. Um, and once our consultant is the contract is over, we're just going to continue to work. There's uh, not a set year right now. So they'll set up, I'm, I'm assuming a part of that, they'll probably set up structure. Well, so right. it's repeatable. I, I think at this point it's a little more organic like that. Uh, there's no plan for you. You have to set up a board of directors with a president who is doing nothing like that. But then right now it's really about making personal connections. So um, Ben think that reached out to me, uh, mostly because he knew my father said, you have this grassroots movement, I know you're doing a lot of nonprofits, would you be interested? So we had our one-to-one, -one, um, and he said, do you know anyone? And that's why I said, I, I know this girl Jenny who does a food pantry, you know, so that would be something she'd be interested in. She did a one-on-one -on -one with her, and I connected, and that, he said, well, I got a connection uh, with her. So it's kind of building this network. Clearly, we're not going to end up having a network of 40, 50 people in a room shouting over each other. Wonderful if there was that much interest of people who wanted to get involved at a organizing part uh, level. But right now it's just been a manageable, you know, every other week we have a Zoom meeting where we try to get together and discuss and evolve and talk about who we can bring into this. So as far as a special structure, that's I mean now that I'm gonna get you for one on one and you're gonna join us, you can uh, give us that structure. Yeah, I'm just I'm just looking at from a moment. Yeah. How do you keep it repeatable? Because as people move well, roles change, right? How do you keep it repeatable? That's the probably the only thing that I would, no, would look for. Right now, it is, not, not to sound, I guess, it's really a group of friends getting together and talking about how to better things and how to map it and who to talk to. Um, so it's not like we have a fundraising branch and all of the different committees that needs that organization. But um, it could grow into that. But it absolutely right. Does. Um, and that's where I think the focus right now has been making the connection to people so that you want to be part of this because we know you're somebody who cares rather than me saying, oh, that is the throw under the bus, but I'm part of the Shelton Exchange Club. And you say, let me talk to you about the Shelton Exchange Club. You go, I don't know what that is. You're trying to give me an organization. I don't want to be a part. I've got too much like that. But if it's Bob, I know how much you care about this town and food insecurity. Um, we have that discussion and it's much more important. But I think once you join it, uh, that structure though, I said, wonderful. He volunteered, right? That's what that was? <laughs> but, uh, he has so, a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Easy and always no more pipes first, he'll be okay. Um, as, at this level, I would say the structure is a small group in each town community. Um, and then we have, as I said, uh, their monthly cross town meetings. We get into a Zoom, and as many members of each town can go in and update other on what's happening. Uh, again, the coordinator uh, for the team is kind of the one who will say, hey, he, he, I mean, this guy takes meticulous notes, gives you a run for your money. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> um, like the record show is pointing at work. Um, but he's uh, very good at keeping that organization. And yes, once he moves on, you do want to make sure that that doesn't fall apart. So right. that, that is absolutely yeah. something that we're going to back our money. 
and we'll come to a forefront as, as we get closer to where his contract will end, we're going to build in that structure and make sure that there's, I would imagine, kind of a central figure. For be just a board of directors. I mean, it doesn't have to be a yeah. chain. It just could be a board of directors, something that's going to be maintained. That's all. I think you have a good start. I agree with right. Bob, but I think this is great. Mm -hmm. Having a mission statement, Absolutely. you know what your objectives perfect. are and your goals. Yeah. So, good job. This is awesome. Thank you. Then I'll work on a strap plan with you. And you guys will. Is there a selectman bone? I just have one major I mean, this is an incredible talk, and I thank you all very much for coming in. If I were to ask you all, what is the number one thing that we as a board and as a community can do to help you. What is the number one, I mean, intro, the introduction is wonderful. How do, what's the number one way we can turn this into action? I'd say we don't have an answer for that right now. It's communication. Yeah. 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 The connection. That was my answer, communication. Yeah. We have a lot of questions. We're not housing policy experts. We have a lot of resources, folks at team, um, some of the COGS who can help us out with um, policy as we start diving into those discussions. but. You know, we were just talking the other night, um, how many affordable units do we have in Seymour? And we would love to learn from you guys. And, and those are the kinds of questions that we're talking about. And once we have a sense of the landscape um, for housing, food insecurity, and everything else, um, just working together to try to better our community. And so I think communication is number one. And I think people are looking for ways to become involved uh, with the town. Did Reverend Glass just commit to being on a committee? Uh, no, she didn't. And that's what I thought. Wait, what? Oh. I, 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 that's where I was well, going, going to go more, there. Yeah, a more housing in Seymour, they should come. So we get that one We're next. working on that one. But I, I think somebody else could. I live in Seymour, and, and as pastors, we have eyes on the ground. And, and that's what we want to make a commitment. People come to us for the right reasons. And that's what Just the I was just about to say, really I, thought, I thought you looked somewhat familiar with the VA. I, you go to VA? I try not to go to any hospital, but... <laughs> yes. 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 Thank you. Rory Burke, yeah. um, who's our chief of staff, you'd be the person that you speak to. Yes. And honestly, and honestly, sir, all six of us are very open to communication. If you reach out to us, if we don't have an answer, we'll get you somebody who does. If I may, certainly the board that first select woman's office could put together a guide with different department heads to contact for different problems, whether it's yeah, Lowe's absolutely. or or whatever. Rory will Rory will work with you. We'll have a guise of you know whether if it's school, of course it's you know it's the board of ed, it's Dr. Compton. If it's the roads, it would be Tony. Um, oh my God, I'm gonna say Tony DePrimo. It, right now it'd be uh, Frank Frank Gabinelli, um, who's our interim public works director. Um, someone with the Seymour, we would get you their contact number for that. But we can get you all their contact numbers. And if it's housing, Rory and I will work with you yeah. on that. Folks That's coming to team. It's um, folks yeah. coming to team, right? Um, 
And of course, the food, you know, we, we, we love that we have the Blessed Pantry. We love that we have the, 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 the food pantry. We also have the food pantry in the community center as well. And if, if it's people needing help, we are, more, we are more than welcome to help them, to find them a place to stay, to, to do what we can to make sure they have that security they need so that when they go to bed, they're not stressing out the first thing when they wake up in the morning. We're all in it together. And by the way, I'm looking at the All-In for Milford site. It's pretty impressive, this, the diverse resources that they have. Um, not just, uh, I mean, housing, food, um, what's happening at the state level is, this is just very good. That's what happens when you have a lot more than somebody who does so we gotta, we gotta work on it. We gotta work on recruiting somebody who's like, I'll put that together for you. Is there um, any other select person that has a question, comment for them? No? Okay, great. Thank, Thank you, you so much. And, and see, I made sure all our meetings were before Marty Thursday, before we had to be. <laughs> it's that guilt Catholic in my head. And I'm not surprised about Milford, Chris, because they have a great mayor and a great town attorney. So I'm not shocked that they have a great website. But I'm not even going to ask any questions. I'm going to walk into a trap. Yeah. <laughs> Item number seven is discussion and take possible action regarding the Board of Ed HVAC RFP. So we're doing a RFP for the Board of Ed. As you know, we are moving, we are relocating the Board of Ed central office from 100 Bank Street to the high school. So, and what this is is because it's a town owned building. The town has to write the RFP and the town has to go out for the HVAC, ESSER monies will be used because that is what the ESSER money is stated to be used for, is for the HVAC. And this is just approving the school to go out for the RFP and the only reason why it's on our agenda is because it's a town owned building. So can I have a motion to take, uh, for the Board of Ed to go out for an RFP? So move. So move. Moved by Trish, second by Chris Bowen, discussion. If I may. Absolutely. In addition to the central office relocation, this RFP is calling to air condition the remainder of the high school that is not presently air conditioned. Parts are air, air conditioned, but when the 1985 renovation expansion was completed, not a, the, that, the remainder of this building was not part of that project. So. The second floor of the high school is very hot, as many of us know who went to school there, very warm, and this will be a great solution for that problem also for the st students and staff. Um, but Madam First Selectman is correct, we need air conditioning in the new offices for the central office, so this will accomplish quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And the funding for this is coming from the Board of Ed's ESSER funds at right. this time. Right. That's the intent. And the plan is to call, is calling for the high school and Bungie School as an ad alternate. Yeah. So if there's money left, we will look at Bungie School. Mm -hmm. I just want to point out the ESSER funds have to be used for, for that kind of intent and not for staffing because grants are very specific and it's either going to be used or it's not going to be used. It can't just be selected. Yeah. We do not want to, for anything someone wants, we do not want to end up in a situation such as West Haven is currently in. So I just want to go on record for saying that because I hear some whispering that there are individuals who would like to use the funds for something else um, for other purposes, but it's not what the purpose of the grant is for. So have to be very mindful that we they're used pro uh, properly. And I may just piggyback, in addition to comfort, this type of system is great for ventilation. and fight COVID and other airborne infections. Uh, Selectman Stack, I have a question for you. How many days have we lost in the past few years, not counting COVID, due to heat? I believe only two or three. Okay. That's just curious because I know we've had that come up as a problem. Yes. Do you have any? Good. Yeah. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Passes unanimously. 6-0.
Thank you. Item number eight, discussion and take possible action regarding the re resolution concerning the 2022 small cities grant in your, in front of you, you have a revised copy with Seymour on it, the resolution for the town of Seymour um, under the fair housing resolution. Rich, do we need to read it or could we? I'm on the other one? Oh yeah, sorry. Grab the wrong one. In your packet. It's a certified resolution for the Town of Seymour Small Cities Grant. The Small Cities Grant is used generally for rehabbing small, small communities. Um, we don't know how they are going to use it because we're only authorizing them to start writing it. Um, and they need public comment on that. And later on in that you will see we have a public comment on that. So I need a motion to allow this. Motion to move forward. Second. Motion by second. Trish, second by Al Bruno. Discussion. Um, Madam First Select Woman, per our, um, the template I'm assuming is going to be changed because what we have in front of us is not accurate. For the small cities grant? Yes. Or the resolution, rather. Am I looking the at certified the certified resolution for the Town of Seymour Small Cities grant? Can you point out? Am I looking at the right page? I don't know. It's page 13. Oh, wait, I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, it's fair housing policy. It would be da, da, da. page 11. Be page I, 11. Uh, 11, right? Yeah. I think. It's page 11. It's right, right after here. the notes. You're, you're looking at the notes. You're looking at the resolution, hearing. right, I think. 13 would be the notes of public hearing. Sure. <clears throat> Chris, does your heading say certified resolution of the town of Seymour Small? No, it says right? resolution town of Seymour. Yeah, so no, that's different. Okay, that's I right. apologize. Yeah, that's fair. It's the one, the page before. Right. It's, it's right after okay. the agenda. Okay, yeah, that one's fine. No, excuse me. Um, I have a motion to move forward? So I made so the motion. Yeah, oh, you did. did. Yeah. All in favor, sorry. Aye. 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 Abstain? No. Uh, share votes, aye. Motion carries 6 0. Thank you. Okay, on to number nine, which is discussion and take possible action regarding the resolution concerning fair housing. In front of you is a resolution for the town of Seymour. Rich, do I have to read the full thing or can we put it? There's a new one There's in front of you, Chris. Idea. Oh, it is in front. Okay, yep. so it was corrected. Yeah. I have a motion to move the resolution as written. So moved. Second. Motion by Bob Finley, second by Fred Stanick. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries 6 0. Mm. <coughs> Item number 10. Set public hearing for Tuesday, May 3rd, 2022, at 6 30 in the Norma Drummer Room at Seymour Town Hall to solicit public input citizens to, pu to public solicit public input. Regarding Seymour 2022 Community Development Block Grant Program. So moved. Motion by Trish. Second. Second by Bob Finley. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. aye. Motion carries 6 0. Once again, this is a um, the requirements for small city grants are every year. Okay. Number 11. Is discussion and take possible action regarding the C PACE partial release agreement. What the C PACE is, it's in your packet, and you see why we're doing this. The C PACE is a low interest loan for commercial properties for energy efficient. This board passed it years ago, but the plan has been updated, and we need to either accept it or deny it. Can I have a motion to accept it? Motion to accept. Motion by Bob Finley. Second. Second by Al Bruno. Discussion? Can I get a little background on this? I'm not familiar. How many, I mean, have we had companies take advantage of this? Is it beneficial? Is it, sorry? I'm sorry. Okay. Yes, it's um, for exclusively commercial properties. It's like a low interest loan program for energy efficiency upgrade. We have not, to my knowledge, I think that in the email actually that is in the packet, 
Mm -hmm. They say we have not. Right. right. That's why I'm asking, what's the benefit? Do we offer it? Do are people aware it's there? Yeah, I have. I personally have mentioned it to, to businesses when speaking with them. Um, it's just, you know, another tool. Yeah, yeah. it's something you want in your back pocket. Okay. That's why if, if you don't have it, you're aware of that. I'm not opposed to having it. I'm just surprised if we wanted to make sure I understood make that sure comment. It's part of like the tax piece. incentive program. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries six zero. Thank you. Next on the item is number 12. Discussion and take possible action regarding the resolution concerning an easement at 6 Colony Street extension. So Patton Ave is a dead end. I'm going to see if I can, I'll call you Rich, I'll tag you in Rich. If I start to flutter. Patton Ave is a dead end and it goes downhill. So when the properties drain, it all drains into this, the dead end. And what happens is it either floods out or it ices out. And what we need, as our town engineer said, is we need to put a storm drain in there so the water is collected and taken away. Because um, also when you get stag you know, stagnant water, you also get a mosquito breeding ground, and that's not good either. <clears throat> so we've approached said gentleman um, about this, and, um, well, there's been discussion about pricing. So we could not agree upon a price. Um, the attorneys have had um, appraisers go out there and we have the appraiser. So now we're going to take it by imminent domain and we will take the money that we offered him and put it into the court system into us. No? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. I paid him into escrow. And the gentleman can either take the money and run because we're going to use this as an easement or he can appeal it. But we still have that easement. Um, and the money's aside, and the money's cast. And, and, and the money's still there. Yeah. But this is needed for the safety, for the roads, as well as well beings, because we don't want it to be a mosquito breeding ground. This is a municipal drain project, so we're using the powers of eminent domain in connection with a municipal drain. Uh, the town has tried over a long period of time to come to terms, and has been unsuccessful. So are we allowed to know the opposition what's the opposition since it's beneficial for the resident it seems as oh, well we have a motion first and then we can just can we have okay. a motion first to discuss yeah, yeah. thank you yeah second sorry al i like to do things out of order. first by al second by bob finley discussion okay trish if, if i may one may be common. The town engineer showed him the design and how he was going to do it, and he disagreed. And there's no way to do it to please him. I mean, it's a safety issue, it sounds like, safety and health issues. So, how long has this been negotiated, roughly? Okay. I remember this coming up on planning. I, I so. think I can remember it for a while. It's been at least three years. <laughs> okay, duly noted. 2011. Uh, 2011, yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Mm. Move it along. Hold on, I'm not done yet. Yeah. Has there been any discernible harm so far harm. to the community? What do you mean? Has anyone gotten sick? Or was there any damage, road damage, or could be any? So I don't know if you're familiar with Patton Avenue. I know. I I've seen this come up on planning, so yeah, so I'm familiar with the whole thing. Essentially, at some point, for whatever reason, the town deeded the end of the road to the resident at the end of the road. Um, this guy here? The, this guy I here? I think so, yeah. Okay. Um, and so, it previously was not a problem, but when that took place now, the, the runoff is running down their driveway, and in the past couple of years, public works has had to go out there on a number of to put millings down because their driveway is being completely eroded. And because the water
water is coming from a public street, that's a problem. Um, and then regarding the particular um, path that was chosen for this evening, um, it's a matter of topography, you know, water's got to flow downhill, and so there's, there's only really one path. Uh, it has to go, the neighborhoods are pretty close in that area, so it has to go over to Collins Street Extension, where there's currently a drink. If I remember right, Six Colony Street is above Patton Avenue. Okay, so water is hitting Patton Avenue. I'm sorry, rushing down onto Patton Avenue because of the easement that's on Six Colony Street. There is currently no easement. Uh, I'm sorry, lack of easement. My apologies. Yeah. So what this will do is go put in some catch basins and then tunnel the water over to Colony Street. Where and it's going to go under his property, that property. Right. I see. Yep. I see where it is. The, the harm is just that you know the person's property is being impacted. But there's been, and the other harm has been somebody else's driveway. I'm not asking about the harm to him. The, the harm to him is pretty obvious at this point. Yeah. Um, I'm asking about the harm to the rest of the community. We, we've t we're talking about this right now. I I'm going to be honest with you. This is a hard sell for me. Um, I'm asking about the harm to the rest of the community. Has there been anything discernible that we can say, yes, this person has been injured, or yes, this person has had something taken from them? Yeah, so, so 6 um, Colony Street is not. That is where the easement will pass through. Mm -hmm. uh, the resident who was at the end of the is the one who's driving. And we're going to do it by taking his property. It's going to go to Colony Road, not. No, we're, we're not taking his property. We're, ta we're, we're taking an easement. Yeah, you're taking. Okay. Yes. So this will be the easement, I assume. Yes. And it would go under or through. It does, it's under. yeah under. Okay. What is the potential oh, of this causing extra exterior damage to his property? I remember this question coming it's up before. It's just the. So the storm drain is on top. Mm -hmm. Right. There'll probably be grass around it. Okay. The pipes are going to be underneath the ground. So there's really. One of the things that. Uh, Yeah. We'd have to maintain it, or else you're going to have so a backup. I, I have a case going to federal court right now in another community where, where the town, that particular community, came in and put in a drainage system. Somebody came along, bought the lot, built a house on it, and the claim is years later that uh, they didn't maintain it and there's all sorts of damages and everything else from it. So, yes, we have to have an easement to be able to go on forever. And if we have to tear up the grass, then we have to replace the grass. Okay. Amber, you said it's going to Colony, not Colony Extension, not, so it's going to be going towards Seymour. Right? Colony Road. It's Colony Road, right. Well, yeah. I think it goes to Colony, colony, road, right? well, yeah. goes to colony Her, cause Colony Street Extension is it's on here. the opposite side. Well, no, there's parts of Seymour. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. No, go ahead. I just wanted to interject, help Chris out. Go ahead. Chris, as Attorney Bertula explained, the easement is the right of a party other than the fee owner to use the property for a specific purpose. So the town will have the right to use this area, a strip of land along the northerly boundary of the property, for the specific purpose of installing, repairing, and maintaining a drainage system. Okay, but you'd still need to get, this gentleman would still need to grant the town access to maintain this drainage. Am I correct in this? Well, the, the, the route that Mr. Bertula is explaining is that the town is going to 
by eminent domain <coughs> take the easement because an agreement with the property owner cannot be worked out. Okay. This is going on about a decade. Right. It's wild. So, okay. so the town will come in, install the drainage system, restore the property, seed it, and nothing will be done unless there's a problem in the future. And the town has the right to drain water through the system. Yeah. And Fred, he probably they probably have access to it as well because they're going to put a manhole cover maintenance. for maintenance. Right. right. Will that main will that manhole cover be on his property? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I do not. I see. But he will. This gentleman will be able to continue to use his land except when it's disrupted for construction purposes or maintenance in the future, as if it, nothing, as if the town did not have any right to it. Or the town's going to have to keep paying to repair the driveway. Or face potential litigation in the future for not remedying the problem. Yeah. Right. You know, right. There are drainage cases that occur from time to time. Yeah. We're trying to be proactive here. Yeah, I think this whole thing is a shame, but it, we've been trying for 11 years to work it out with the owner. Yeah. I, it's unfortunate we can't reach an agreement, but there is a health and safety concern. This is the last, I'm, I'm sorry, please, Mr. Burrow. Yeah, I, I, I think that when you have somebody who is being this obstinate, Chris, when you've tried to work with that individual, like we always have, mm -hmm. we've been very reasonable, it's time to move on. Okay. Because it's a simple cost-benefit analysis, and it's a safety issue, too. Please understand that I have very strong reservations regarding the use of eminent domain. Okay. And I understand, I understand that there's a potential safety issue. I, I even understand that there's a potential uh, litigation issue. But I'm still, I'm going back and forth on this in my head. I just, this is the last thing I'll say on this issue. I'm not sure this rates, I, I'm just. he still owns it. We're not taking it from him. We're, right. we're not, solving yes. a problem and we need. Through his property. In well, order like, to. It's the maintenance through his property, through his property that's property causing me to hold it. He just purpose. gave a, a better, he just gave a better analysis of that than my property professor did in law school. So that, that's basically what it, all it does, Chris. And that's fine if you have reservations. Um, you should speak your mind. I'm not saying you shouldn't. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't want to, I don't. I think you should listen to what Fred's saying. And okay. That's basically what it is. There's no taking of the man's house. You know what I'm saying? That's that's I exactly. understand. That I understand. That's the type of eminent domain I would understand you're objecting to. The city, the town is not taking a house to build yeah. a road or to build a new yeah. community center or anything <clears throat> like that. That's right. Remedy is. My, it's just to use this it. This is yeah. the last thing I'll say. My only cons yeah. my big concern here and is the manhole cover access for the town on his property. But you need that for maintenance, or he could actually come back later complaining and having a problem if it's not even maintained because another issue. But comes Chris, up. how different right. is that from having a, an electrical box on your property like I do? For cable, for electricity. Because for, you're consenting to private that's companies. Right. I consent to it because it benefits the entire neighborhood and it benefits my community. So when you take your personal rights to this degree, you can do that. And he's tied us up for 10 years now. Now it's time to move along. So if he, yeah, you if he may didn't. not have consented to that. The, the public utilities have the right to right. take. Right, right. They, they can take the first, how right. many how many feet? Yeah, right, right away. Right. Probably five, six feet of your land is yeah. not really your land. They, right. They absolutely have the right to do that. Right. Okay. But, but Chris, I can stand out there and try to so stop them all I want. It was done when the road was put in before my house was built. Right. Chris, if we hadn't spent the last 11 years trying to, you know, work something out with the owner in good faith, because we don't want to upset him, I agree this isn't ideal. I might agree with you a little bit more. I mean, I have a fire hydrant on my property. So, and I, I mean, when that happens, you just have to be open to the idea that if the town ever needs to use it for something or to maintain whatever has to be done, you just have to be open to that. And unfortunately, this is someone that's not been open to anything over 11 years and trying to remedy something that can become a great hazard, physically or health-wise, and is causing damage and costing the town money 
and having to repair someone else's property consistently while we've been trying to work this out with him okay. for 11 years. So, with the lawsuit. you know, I mean, just that, that's just my two cents on why I'm, I'm not no. happy that he has not agreed because that would have been the ideal state. Mm -hmm. But I just want to put on the record, I, have I don't, to support I don't really it. care whether he agrees or not at this point. I just want to make sure I'm... I'm, well, I'm just saying it. that would have it would have been ideal to get agreement because I don't, I don't really I'm not... I, I hate to have a resident <laughs> upset over I something like this, I hate to have like a neighbor this, like that. Well, oh, wait a minute. It just has to happen. I, all right, all right. Okay. I just want to say we could very we could very easily have gone to this with a 5-1 vote and been done with this 10 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. But I thank you all. Selectman so Bruno, Selectman, so all five of you, thank you very sincerely uh, for taking the time to discuss this with me. I think that's very important. Um, that's what this board does. We discuss and we work together. I think you have all made good points and I will support this. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion carries 6 0. Together. Okay. <laughs> Someday. All right. It's like a Dickens novel. Like it, yeah, almost, almost. On to first select woman's report. I'm going to try not to be so long on this one. How's that? State Bonding Commission approved a 250,000 grant in aid to Seymour for a train station renovation and sidewalk improvement. We will be um, updating the existing building that is there along with the sidewalks with this grant. We are going to be working with the Department of Transportation to see what we can and what we cannot do. We're kind of hoping we can put lights along uh, the Broad Street Bridge. Um, hopefully we can do that, but we'll still let us know. April is Autism Awareness Month, um, as well as Donate for Life. We will be hosting a flag raising ceremony um, with the Autism Awareness flag on Saturday, uh, April 9th, 2022 at one o'clock p.m. in front of Town Hall. It will be under the uh, flag, the Connecticut flag as well. I think it's very important that we um, we make everybody aware of, of the making every sure everybody is accepted and autism awareness is the right also to um, donate life month to help you know with the organs and to help someone's life citizens firehouse company number two is hosting a New England style pa uh, pancake breakfast on April 10th at, uh, th that's this Sunday um, there's been a rash of break-ins and attempted break-ins happening. We ask that everyone please lock your doors both in your homes and in your cars and to keep your personal belongings out of view if you're going to keep them in your car. want to welcome home Annalisha Monica um, and welcome Seymour's Sage Day Spa. Annalisha is the owner of Sage Day Spa and we're very excited to have her. Um, Sage Day Spa is located at the Seabridge Plaza on Route 67. <coughs> Renters rebate applications uh, began April 1st, and I think they're open until October, Rory. I think that's what she says. I um, mean, call Dawn Marie at the community center to schedule an appointment. What the renter rebate is, it's to help the elderly and the disabled um, from the prior year before. They take an account to all your bills. I think the maximum amount of a rebate is $900 for a married person. And six or seven hundred dollars for the single person, but they look at all your bills and, and you'll get a, a renter's rebate from that. Um, the American Rescue Plan. Um, the town was awarded four point eight million dollars in the American Rescue Plan. We are holding sessions to speak about um, about this. The first one is Tuesday, April twelfth, twenty twenty two, at seven p.m. at the Seymour Middle School. The second one is Wednesday, April 13th at 7 o'clock p.m. in the Norma Drummer Room. And the last and final one is Thursday at 11 o'clock a.m. in the Seymour Community Center. Hot Tamales is going to be having their taco eating contest again. I am not getting into this contest. You, you, should, I still have you should be. Oh, my God. I'm not doing it. I, I lost. I'm trying to lose the weight. So anybody interested in getting into that taco eating contest? It's going to be happening on May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. What about Miller? Fat boy? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Is that on record? Did you record that? Put that in there. But I call him. <laughs> yes, you did. I said hello. Wow. Kurt's having a rough. I call him that all the time. Um, 5 o'clock p.m. Miller will not, he'll be judging. He won't be eating. Judging. Smart. Smart, right? 
He so, can't keep up. He, he can't, can't keep up. I, I'm no, not he, proud. Alex Danka. I am not proud to say this, but my husband won by stealing <laughs> Kurt's tacos one year because they weren't did. delivering them to him <laughs> fast enough. <laughs> so it was disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> um, anybody interested in helping uh, or wanting to uh, take part in it, please let us know. And Fat Boy was made out of a loving comment because that's what we call it. Um, the water company will be paving South Main Street where they installed the water main. In speaking to them, it doesn't look like they're going to do the whole repaving curb to curb, just the area that they cut up. Um, the Board of Finance has set the public hearing date um, for the meeting April 7th, 2022 at 7 p.m. No, it's 6, what is it, 6 o'clock p.m. 6 o'clock p.m. here. Um, 7 o'clock is their meeting at the Norma Drummer Room. The annual town meeting is Thursday, April 14th, 7 o'clock p.m. at the Seymour Middle School. The budget referendum is a date that we all vote on the budget. Is April 28th. All registered voters can vote at the community center from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Absentee ballots will be available in town clerks. Town hall has already sent out the postcards to every residential resident in the town of Seymour. So they received a postcard listing the date for the referendums in case it doesn't pass the first time. And we also ordered the sandwich boards. We ordered 12 of them with the dates that we're gonna put them throughout the town to let everybody know. We'll have the signs up. It will be on the Valley Indy, it will be in Voices. We'll be putting it on our Facebook page. We'll be putting it on our town page. There'll be no, and we're doing a code red. So everybody will know when the budget vote is taking place. Will you? Will Xander be there? Okay. Um, Town of Seymour is planning a, in the process of planning an Earth Day event. Um, what we're currently doing now is having re uh, residents call us um, in coming together to clean up their neighborhoods. Yes, we have Public Works, and yes, Public Works does a great job of cleaning, but Public Works can't be on every single street picking up. So we ask that the residents help chip in, pick up the trash. No, we're not doing trees, we're not doing debris, we're not doing, we're just doing recyclables, trash, rubbish. And they're going to put out the garbage bags and Public Works will go around and pick them up. We're also working on um, getting together to do a cleanup over at the Keith Mitchell Forest. Um, I think the Conservation Commission was looking at doing Little Laura Line um, Park. And I know Casa Grande coaches and managers are going to be cleaning up. Earth Day is important. It's important that we take care of our Earth so it's here for us and our next generations. Um, we are narrowing down our locations for the dog park. I'm down to two. I can't say where they are yet. And the community center committee will be meeting next month. We were just, someone just donated a fence for our dog park. So whenever we pick the area, they're going to put the fence in. So that's more money we don't have to spend. Save, save, save where we could. Um, Great Hill Hose is having their Easter egg hunt on April 10th at 1 o'clock p.m. April 16th is the Household Hazardous Waste Collection. If you have paints, cleaners, and other chemicals, that's where to go. Um, Naugatuck Valley Health is hosting their blood drive on April 23rd. And there's a Veterans Appreciation Concert on April 30th at 6 o'clock p.m. at the Seymour Middle School. Tickets are $10, and you can call the Legion to get the tickets for that. And the Seymour High School Sports Hall of Fame Induction Banquet is April 30th, 2022, at 5 o'clock p.m. at the Villa Bianca. I have a table of tickets. If anybody wants to go, I have tickets. I bought a table. Just let me know. And that's all I have. And that was enough. And you can also find that. In, okay. You can also find all that information and more on what's happening on the 888 on Facebook. How's that? <coughs> on to appointments. A little punchy. <laughs> Try to keep everybody up to date. If you guys can get me information on All In For Seymour, I will put that in my 888 as well. You were just saying that, weren't you? It's her newsletter. Van Deegan and I are the same. It's my great newsletter. Like you like my newsletter. Okay, appointments for the Board of Selectmen. Bob Finley, Strategic Planning Committee, reappointment two years, expires on 4-5-2024. So move. Second. Motion by Trish, second, second by Fred. All in favor? Aye. aye. Abstain? Abstain. Chair votes aye. <laughs> Motion carries 501. Note, Fred, note Bob Finley's abstention. 
Deidre Caruso, Fair Housing Coordinator. It's a reappointment for three years. 4 5 2024 is when it expires. So moved. So moved. Motion by Trish, second by Bob. All in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries 6 0. Deidre Caruso is the ADA coordinator. It's a reappointment, three years. 4 5 2024 is when it expires. So moved. So moved by Bob, second by Al. All in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries 6 0. Steve Dittria, meeting moderator. Um, we didn't have any meeting moderators, so we had to put meeting moderators in. And it can't be anybody from a board. I move the appointment of Steve Dittria as meeting moderator. Motion by Fred. Second. Second by Chris. All in favor? Aye. aye. Abstentions? No? Okay. Chair votes aye. Motion carries 6 0. Phil Willamy, meeting moderator. Appointment two years. Expires 12 6 2023. So Motion Second. by Trish. Second. Second by Al Bruno. All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye, motion carries 6 0. Okay, good. Moving right along. Tax refunds and abatements in your packet is the latest tax refunds and abatements. Please review. Make if a motion to accept as Motion present. by Trish. Second. Second by Bob. All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye, motion carries 6 0. Correspondences. Transfers. Transfers. Transfers, yep. Sorry. Transfer. In your packet, you will see a transfer. Um, what this is, there's two transfers to cover the cost of the share of service agreements. Uh, excuse me. For Rob Dyer and Tim Connor's salary and benefits. Because the agreement was done after the budget season, uh, we are transferring the funds from... Um, transferring the money from fund balance because we're anticipating an unbudgeted surplus from the state and we have been guaranteed that surplus Do you have a motion 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 by Bob Second. Second by Trish. Discussion? Is it, this is just for one, correct? Just for Bob and uh, No, this no. is just for the facilities director? Tim and this Rob Dyer. Tim Rob. It just mm. follows. Uh, it's right here. I don't. I had it in my yes. We have it right here. Contracts. But yeah, well, Rob's. I'm a little facilities confused. Facilities director. Oh, it's IT not in here? Salary, IT, IT director? It's, IT, it's, it's the it's, IT salary. It's, it's, the, that's it's the right after, if you go right to the next one. Name. Minus the 80% contribution, et cetera. So it's the IT director. So they're two separate yeah. transfers. Two separate. Yeah. So they two have separate. to be, yeah, Done. we have to. Yeah. So they have to do them one at a time. Yep, but there's two transfers. Okay. Would we be specific in a motion for the record? Yeah. Okay, take back the motion. Right. Can I have a motion for the first one for Tim Connors? So for Motion by Bob Finley. Second. Second by Trish for transfer control number four for right. Tim Connors. Discussion? Can you just explain one more time how this is, why this is being taken from fund balance? And Go ahead. I'm sorry. It's okay. Yeah. I think. Mm. Be well, because we did the service contract, service agreements were done after the budgets were done. So the money was not in our budget. Going forward, it's budgeted. Yes, correct. yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We couldn't ask them for, to give us the 50% for 10. They'll, they'll give us the It's coming out of the same balance. Have a motion uh, and a approve motion to approve. Five. We have control item five. Please. Control item. Well, we got to vote on four first. Oh, I thought we did four already. No, nope, we did discussion. We're just voting. Got it. There's four, and then right after that, go, so go four. Right. Okay. That's his job. That was his oh, that right. there's okay. There. Okay. Okay. Have approval for item number four. Because we're so, in discussion. So moved. 
Motion by no, no we did we did a fake all we're just voting, right? right? All in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry. Right. Chair votes aye, motion carry six. Five. <coughs> this is for Rob Dyers. So moved. Motion by Bob, second by Chris. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye, motion carry six zero. Okay, that was transfers, correspondences. There are no correspondences. Public comment. Is there any public comment? Public comment going three times. No public comment. On to Selectman's public comment. We will start with, since Selectman Finley, we will start on your side this time. No, I the only thing I wanted to go on record was to thank uh, you and, and Nicole and Senator Kelly to get the grant made for the sidewalk and the uh, train station and the effort that was put towards it. Thank you. Um, I want to say thank you to all in. I think it's a great um, goal that you guys have in the committee that you have together. I should have said the same wow. thing. <laughs> I did well, it Well, he's going to be on the committee, so it's okay. Um, yeah, no, I think we're all very happy to have your partnership and your presence in town, so thank you very much. Um, before I get on a soapbox, okay, I just have a request, Anne-Marie, if um, Doug, if you can ask Doug to send me the debt service for the last, um, let's say, five years and forward five years, please, if I can see the graph of where we've been and where we're at and where we're going to be in the next five years I would okay. appreciate that um, that's for the building okay. also here's my soapbox are you standing no I'm not okay. gonna stand I'm just I just like to get my back straight so I'm not slouched so I want to talk about the budget process this year because I'm pretty highly disappointed um, I was chairman of the Board of Finance for many years. No, I have no interest in going back, so I don't want to get too high up on my soapbox. But um, I'm really disappointed after attending a meeting and having a conversation um, with the chairman, Chairman Sawicki, um, who was very professional in the conversation. And just in how I'm seeing the, 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 meetings, the meetings go. So, after looking at the finalized budget, and in full disclosure, I am on the events committee. My husband is the chairman. Not, I'm not personally too passionate about it, but I think all of the selectmen here have seen my husband's passion for it. Hmm. Um, it is really disappointing that they have knocked down their funds <coughs> incredibly to the point where there will be no Christmas parade this year this coming year there is going to be no fireworks uh, welcoming Santa and I understand from the perspective of the Board of Finance that something like events is obviously going to take a hit over something as say the fire department or the police department our schools um, I get it I do get it but to decimate any one committee without looking at like committees and doing a similar type thing I think is disgusting. I think it's, um, I think it is speaking volumes about taking a stand against a certain uh, person or committee for whatever reason and I don't really, I don't really know what it is but to have, I don't, this Christmas parade and the fireworks welcoming Santa and have been going on in Seymour for much longer than my husband and I have lived in town. I know I look a lot, no you don't. Thank you. Well, I was gonna say, I look a lot like I'm still 25 <laughs> when I moved here. Because <laughs> you look like you're 20. <laughs> but that's how long I know that these events have been going on. And when I sat on that board, I made sure that everybody spoke at the meetings asked questions I made sure that we had public comment and contributions and I also kept my board members in check if I felt that things were going a little awry or askew because of personal feelings towards a certain individual or committee if we were cutting one item another item that was similar and just using the events committee because it was cut so drastically mm -hmm. as an example arts and culture 
not cut very much at all. Contributions, which I do support and understand the need to do for the Pumpkin Festival, for our other organizations such as Pop Warner, those type events, um, um, or nonprofit organizations in town that support um, a livable community, not cut. So um, while there are many other things in the budget that I'm quite disappointed at, um, this just spoke volumes to me. I know my husband was really passionate about also doing a 100-year celebration. Totally did not expect funds to be allocated to that this year, but considering how the budget's been cut, I, can, mm -hmm. I think we can expect that's not happening ever either. Because if these events don't happen, I think the recommendation is arts and culture is going to pick up and do everything. And they're, you know, we're short on volunteers in this town, and that's the problem. We have a lot of people who are sitting on multiple committees, multiple boards, and you get fried. And when I speak with the chairman of the Board of Finance in here, we all felt you could fundraise more. Well, we do fundraise. We fundraise for the Memorial Day Parade. We did have funds for that and did not ask for funds this year. And to ask us to fundraise for absolutely every single event to hit up the same businesses all the time so that we can reach a point that we're not granted with their gracious contributions, you know, that it's, it's just sad what the thought process is. So again, I know I got on my soapbox a little bit because I, you know, there is more than one way to skin a cat. I never did feel like when I left the Board of Finance, things were just gonna fall apart. I just don't have that kind of mentality. However, I'm really unhappy about how this year's process went at minimum because I have seen it. I've had the personal conversation and continued as I said at our last meeting, um, continue to see it as the only board that I'm aware of in town that absolutely refuses to follow the strategic plan's recommendation for public comment at both the beginning and end of a meeting. We're here because the public put us here and we should be supporting the public and the residents and listening to what they have to say. <clears throat> I'm going to be quiet now, I think. I don't want to be because I could keep going, but um, it's just really disappointing to see how the process pans out and where it lands because I think it is not in the best interest of the town and it's not even giving the town's people an opportunity to decide for themselves. We've let just a few people make that decision for us. I promise I'll be quiet now, so thank you very much. I'll swatch again. I'm done. Select member. I just want to thank um, All In for Seymour for coming tonight. Uh, apologies, I was running late. I had a conflict, but I really enjoyed hearing um, the majority of what you had to say. I know there are really tough times for folks not only in our country, but around the world right now, especially in Ukraine. So it's great that we're going to take care of uh, some folks locally. So I have 100% of my support, and I'm glad you all took the time to attend this meeting tonight. And uh, I'm not surprised to see Mr. Van Egan as part of your group, because he's a very giving member of our community, he volunteers a ton of his time, mm -hmm. and is always promoting efforts for others, never himself. So it doesn't oh, shock me. Way to throw that great in job, there. <laughs> Jeez. See what you do when you try to do something nice for someone. <laughs> here's, uh, my no, it's serious, here's my card. Here's my card. Thank you for coming tonight. This is a little plug. Appreciate it. It's, it's folks like you that, that we need more of in our town, like Trish was saying, and, and folks have been saying, of oh, volunteers. <coughs> not enough people want to volunteer in our community. So do your thing. Be like a dog with a bone, and, and I hope others are. I'm all for it. Um, I just also wanted to talk about our performing arts program at our high school. My wife, my daughter, and I had the pleasure <coughs> to attend their um, event, not this past Friday, the Friday before, where kids, it was uh, musical performances, uh, singing and instruments. And I was highly impressed 
by the talent level we have in our community as somebody who loves live music and goes to a lot of live shows. Um, these kids, you can tell, they put a lot of time in and they are super talented. So kudos to the performing arts program at the high school. I know Ms. Chacon's involved. And I forget the name of the gentleman who's also involved in Ms. Chacon. His name escapes me, but the kids were just fantastic. So if, if they ever do that again, um, I, they, they just took donations at the door. I, I think we could fill up the entire auditorium. It was really filled up for them, but they, they were just they were fantastic. Um, the other piece is I just wanted to, to have Rory and Emery know I went online for the website and I was taking a peek at the Board of Finance uh, town budget hearing, the Board of Finance meeting that's scheduled for Thursday, April 7th of this week here in the Norma Drummer Room. There seems to be a conflict regarding the time. On the first part of the website it says 7 and then when you go a little bit deeper when you click on the event itself it says 6. So it's my understanding that that meeting is at six o'clock, correct? The the town meeting is at six. The hearing, the budget hearing, the budget is hearing piece six o'clock is at six. They have a special finance meeting directly after, after. that at seven. Okay, I just ask that that be made a little more clear on the website because I've gotten some uh, communications about that and and. I wasn't quite sure what, to, I don't want to give them incorrect info. I said, all I know is that the hearing piece is at six and I believe they're gathering at seven. So I think mm -hmm. I gave them the right info, but I just ask you guys to just uh, make sure that's clear because I think it's going to be important for folks to come out and give their public comment as Trish was talking about, uh, which is agenda item number three, public comment about our town budget and our board of ed budget. I, I've received a lot of uh, questions about that and when things are going on so um, I want to make sure that's out there and, and I'd like to echo some of what you know Trish said I, I agree with it I think that we need to, the, the process has been a little bit um, I think our Board of Finance could have done a better job slowing it down and allowing a little more input and I was in the meetings I've been to I haven't seen a lot of communication among members uh, like we've had discussion, like like Chris had, and just yeah. questions and just hammering it out. I don't know. Maybe they're doing that in other meetings that I haven't attended. But I expect elected officials to have those <coughs> communications and um, in the public and to take public comment and hear, at least consider what people are saying. Um, you know, they're the elected officials. They make the ult ultimate decision when to put things forward and how things are going to look. But it is up to the voters to decide our budgets. And that's all I have to say. Thanks. Second Spirit. Thank you, Madam Chris Lockman. I too would like to thank the members of All In for being here this evening. It's a wonderful tribute to you folks for becoming community organizers and community activists and we look forward to working with you. I would like to state that the Board of Education last night voted to set the graduation date for June 21st, rain date June 22nd. As a follow-up to some of what Tricia mentioned, I also am a member of the Parade and Events Committee. I've enjoyed being a member of that committee over the past few years. It's a committee that wants to enhance the quality of life in the town of Seymour and pay tribute to the veterans. And as Tricia said, with the monies that are being allocated at this time, there will not be a Christmas parade, unfortunately. Christmas parade previously was part of a private organization which disbanded because the members became old and left and decided that it was decided to, that the town would take over the parade and that was delegated to this committee and there's not funding for it. So let's hope the Board of Finance appropriates some additional funds. I would also like to state that with regard to the Board of Finance, I will be speaking Thursday evening at the public hearing in favor of increasing the Board of Education budget. And that's all I'll say at this time. Thank you. Um, I once, first off, I echo what everyone has said and thank you all very much, not only for coming out, but for staying. You stayed through that discussion? That's, I'm impressed. I really am. Um, and we need more volunteers. And that means that we need to be more engaging 
as elected officials with the community and to hear and see some of the issues that have gone on with public discussions not just at board of finance but at the board of education meeting that i attended last month um some of the issues i said this a couple weeks ago when we last met it is imperative that we listen to the people and it is imperative that we give them a voice because otherwise what will happen is they go online and feel that they don't have a say and when that happens you don't get good feedback you're gonna we're gonna have we've got people that are accusing just general elected people of being greedy asking for money um not another penny is some feedback i've heard we're in the middle of budget season and this might be a rough one mm -hmm. and we need to have a strong collective dialogue on this as a community we're a 16,000 member community and we have to act like the small town that we are we have to talk to one another we have to get off facebook get off the internet it's ironic that i'm saying get off facebook but um talk to people face to face hear their concerns we're elected for a reason we're elected to hear concerns and to hear the things that select woman Danka mentioned it, it's inexcusable it's absolutely inexcusable and it has to stop now um because we, we shouldn't be having this discussion in 2022 um this is the only way we get good feedback and use it to create real action um that's about it. Thank you. I know I Bob meant it. I lead. I don't like the lead. Bob <laughs> meant it in his heart. Well, we thank all for one for, for being here. And, and please let us know if you want to get on any committees in town. We're always looking for volunteers. We love volunteers. Send us your information, and we'll put it in what's happening in the 888. Um, and with that, I will take a motion. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion by Trish. Second, second. by Chris. Uh, Bowen. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries 6-0. Look at that.